all this is dr mobin sayed from drbean.com welcome to one more show so uh, a few days of uh, absence because of the conference the discussion today i want to do is about this boston university's researchers um building a new variant so instead of me instead of i saying that it is a good thing or a bad thing why not we go over what they did and then i am sure that some of us will have concerns and some of us would think it's okay i will also express how i think but i don't want to bias you beforehand so let's start our discussion so these are the gifts for humanity they are continuing quick references first of all this is drbean.com in the description of this video there is a link for drbean.com access really inexpensive one time fee 900 plus lectures medical lectures you will enjoy them so for you or for your family members or for medical students nursing students nurses professionals so let's start here is the preprint it is a preprint by the boston university the lead author or researcher is mohsen saeed he is actually from the department of biochemistry boston and his original town from where he started his education used to be about is 3 hours from where i was born so he is from uh, he studied from faisalabad pakistan so anyways so this is the study that we are going to look into this is the pdf and then there are some other uh, for example if you see here let's look at the news first it's actually going to be interesting boston university researchers testing of lab made vi- version of covid virus draws government scrutiny then this is just <laughs> all over the place i would just like to close this as soon as possible there are just so many ads here exclusive this is playing with fire it could spark a lab generated pandemic experts slam boston lab where scientists have created a new deadly covid strain with an 80% kill rate and i would explain that this is a sensational heading and actually the situation is slightly different or quite different m n e i d l researchers refute uk article about covid strain this is boston university itself and then here is uh, mohsen saeed phd and his background with this context let's look at his study or his mohsen saeed a all this is a study and let's look at my drawings so let's start and for a few minutes if you can also put your bias aside or the priming by the by the news aside and let's look at what did they do and then we form an opinion for good or bad or ugly and i would actually like to hear your opinion as well so here is how this started omicron mutation location and phenotype they were trying to do they were trying to understand the following they were saying we realize that omicron variant is more transmissible evades vaccine immunity and those of us who are going to say that well how about natural immunity in the manuscript they used vaccine immunity so i'm just using what they used so escapes or evades vaccine immunity better than other variants although now we know that there are the xbbs and bq1s that are even better but at the time of this study better than previous variants and also they use the word attenuated pathogenesis or milder pathology so three things please keep in mind we're going to use them more transmissible one evades vaccines and is attenuated has attenuated pathogenesis 
genesis or less pathogenic the question in their mind was why is the case why is it the case and for that they said in their manuscript that the general consideration is that this happens because of the mutations on the spike protein and not only that it also happens because of the mutations on the spike protein at the receptor binding domain and receptor binding motif and i'll explain these areas just for introduction as well we've been discussing them for a long time so i assume that you know them but i'll just talk about them a little here as well so this is the assumption or consideration is the word they used and they said we wanted to figure out so let's see and uh, let's go through this so they said what they did was the following that really caused all this uh, sky falling they generated a virus they created a virus which had 80% more mortality compared to omicron but i want to let you know and i would show you that this 80% more mortality compared to omicron was true however it never reached wuhan level of mortality so it was still lesser than the original ancestor variant's lethality and i would explain why did this lethality was lesser than wuhan that still does not take away the basic consideration for all of us that in the labs people are making building new variants or new viruses and this is just the vir- virus we know and they they talked about it they published the research there must be other research is going on as well i would still not bias you for this is good or not let's continue what they did was this they said we have original ancestral variant and in their manuscript they call it wt wuhan variant and imagine this little green thing here or these little hands i made imagine that is the spike protein of the wuhan wuhan variant here is omicron and i deliberately make made these spike proteins set differently so these are the spike proteins of wuhan with variation in them right so the property of omicron compared to the previous variants it causes attenuated disease it is highly transmissible and even escapes in the fully vaccinated individuals i want to put one message in front of us now because before i forget and that is they said wuhan variant sorry omicron variant is less lethal is less cytotoxic so this is a very delicate point please uh, uh, give me some attention omicron variant is less cytotoxic that means it kills less cells in us compared to the previous ancestors because of that the variant is able to continue to replicate in cells because it does not destroy the cell very fast so the factory or cell in which this variant is making its copies compared to wuhan for example this omicron does not destroy the cell that fast or that quickly because of that omicron has a chance to continue to make more daughters because of that there are more particles made in the same amount of time compared to wuhan variant because of that there is more transmission because the breath of the person has more omicrons in it on the other hand if it was wuhan variant wuhan variant very quickly destroys the cell because of that there are less new particles formed 
because of that, the Wuhan variant's transmission is lesser than Omicron. This is actually very similar to my discussion that if a variant is more lethal, it will kill the person. Here, in, instead of the person, we're talking about the cells. It will kill the person, and so it would have lesser chances to transmit from that person because it has killed the person or made the person bedridden or severely ill. So please keep this one point in mind, that Omicron compared to Wuhan is less lethal to cells, less cytotoxic. Because of that, it can make more daughters for a longer period of time. Because of that, there is more viral load. Because of that, there is more transmission. This is a very profound point that was not revealed in other studies. Okay, so now, Going back to their man manuscript, they said, here is, let's say, the mutated spike protein of Omicron. It has receptor binding domain. Remember that it has two parts. There is an S1 part of the spike protein, and then there is an S2 part of the spike protein. Then S1 part itself is further divided into the S1 protein, and then it has a receptor binding domain that is used to bind with the S2. Then the receptor binding domain is further divided into two parts, the whole receptor binding domain, and then there is a part of that that actually binds with the ACE2, and that is receptor binding motif. So M. Gregory has a question. So Omicron is less potent? Yes. More transmissible, more escaping of the vaccines, but less lethal. And that is what we're going to see here. So I hope you are still with me about this much, that there is Omicron, Omicron has these properties, and it is considered that these properties are because of the mutations on the spike protein. So then, so if you see here, the, I'm just drawn what I just spoke, that there are changes. Now, please remember one more thing. The mutations in Omicron are not just on the spike protein, but they are also within the proteins, the remaining part of the virus as well. The whole body of the virus, that means the end protein and the nuclear end protein is the nuclear capsid, the matrix protein, then the other enzymes within the virus as well. They are all mutated. And, and the researchers say that not just the spike protein is mutated, in fact, a lot of parts of the spike protein are mutated. That is not just the receptor binding domain or receptor binding motif, but the remaining S1 and S2 units also have mutations in them. So summary, imagine there are widespread mutations throughout the virus, not just on the spike protein. And why is that important? We would see that in a few minutes. So to depict that, I have made the Omicron on this side with lots of these red dots. Imagine these are the mutations. And here is the original Wuhan variant. So then comes the Dwight Schrute moment, and that is question, as he used to say, question. So the question becomes, this phenotype, phenotype means the behavior, the appearance of the virus, the clinical behavior, the, sh the shape and everything, the phenotype of this virus or this behavior of Omicron, where is it really coming from? Is it the spike protein mutations that are causing this behavior? And that is what is assumed or considered? Or are there other changes in the Omicron virus? The remaining body of the virus has changes that are also participating in reduced lethality of this virus. That is a question. And so answering that question through theories have been there, but there has no, not been any deterministic answer. This is the first study that actually tried to answer that. So let's see what did they do. Here is what they did. What they did was, and of course, um, researchers have been saying so far that all the 
the different phenotypical behavior or the, or the uh, properties of Omicron are because of the spike protein changes. So what they did was, this is where the actual hue and cry is there. What they did was, they took an Omicron and they took a Wuhan variant. They took their DNA, or sorry, RNA patterns. Then they took the RNA from Omicron for the spike part of the RNA and they transplanted that or they overwrote the Wuhan variant's spike genetics or spike RNA with Wuhan variant spike RNA. So that ended up becoming a genetic structure for a new variant which had the body of the Wuhan variant but the spikes of the Omicron variant. So this is called chimeric variation or another phenotype creation. So what did they do? They took the body, the genes that make up the body of the Wuhan and of course that genetic pattern if I make here for a second, let's say this is the RNA for Wuhan and here in the RNA this part is for the spike protein. They transplanted the messenger RNA or the RNA piece of the Omicron spike over here. So when you make a virus from this gene now or this RNA now, you will end up with a variant that would have all the proteins of Wuhan but the spike of Omicron. This new variant, they called it OMI-S, a new variant which has the spike protein of Omicron. So they called it OMI-S. So again, I am deliberately not saying that they did wrong or they did right. What I want to present to you is what did they do? So you can then say, yeah, I feel concerned about it, or no, that's fine, it happens. So this is why I'm keeping my <laughs> assessment or judgment to myself. Okay, so here we have OMI-S. OMI-S sounds cute, but it actually has Omicron's spike and the Wuhan's body. Good. Then what they did was, with, this, with these three variants, Wuhan variant, and I've made them over here, Wuhan variant, OMI-S variant, and Omicron variant, they used them three to then do tests to see their severity compared to each other. And throughout this, the way they compared was the following. They used Wuhan, the pure natural Wuhan variant, to see what is its lethality, infectiousness, escape, everything. And then they tried these two as well, but then they compared these two with each other. And they also compared these two with this. This is how they, they tested them. So here is what they did. I'm now going to go through the experiments. And once again, I would like you to keep an eye on what they're doing, what they have made, and what they're testing. And I think you would see there are some things that may help us understand that the too much hue and cry in the news may not be, I'm now biasing you, so you can totally disagree with me, may not be warranted. So let's see. Here is the date. They took... They, they did multiple kind of tests. So the first set of tests was to see what do these variants do to cells. So they had this cell which was which contained ACE2 receptors on it and TMPRSS2. Why did they have it? Because we know that for the infection, for the virus to enter the cell, we need ACE2 plus TMPRSS2. So this cell 
was genetically modified to express ACE2 on its surface with TMPRSS2. And this was a Coca-Co cell. And they infected these cells, the Coca-Co cells, with all three of them. Similarly, and separately, not all of them in one. They had separate clusters or plates or wells of these cells, and they separately infected them with these three. They also had another set of cells called Vero E6, and I've discussed those Vero cells in the past. They also infected these cells too with these three types, and again, separately. <coughs> Excuse me. And the first result for infectivity or infection efficiency, here is what they found. And so please give me your attention now. On the CACOS 2 cell side, the most infectious or most efficient that quickly could infect within 24 hours, the most efficient was original ancestral Wuhan variant. Within 24 hours, it was able to infect 89% of the cells. The least infective or efficient in infection was Omicron Pure. That could only, within 24 hours, that could only infect 48% of the cells. Now this is an important time. Now we're talking about another variant that has the body of Wuhan and the spike of Omicron. This OMI-S was 80% efficient. Or... I shouldn't say that way. I should say it this way, that it caused, in the same time, 80% of the cells to be infected. So hear me out here. The most infectious and the most efficient was Wuhan. Then the second most infectious or efficient was the Wuhan body with Omicron spike. And look at the difference between them, 9% difference only. 9% out of 100 absolute, right? Percent. That means Wuhan was still better than this. And be because this variant had the Wuhan body, that is why it was about 80%. And if it had the Omicron body, then it was 48%. So what do you think? This is the first message. What do you think? Is it the spike proteins mutations of Omicron that are doing this efficiency of infection? No. It is the Wuhan variant's body. That is what they were trying to prove. That it's not, or they were trying to study. They were not trying to prove one way or the other. They were trying to see, is it the mutation on the spike protein that is responsible for these kind of differences? And there is another very delicate point here, and that is, look at the difference between Wu, Wuhan and OMI-S. OMI-S is still lesser than Wuhan, even after being constructed separately. So if we wanted to say this is gain of function, there is actually no gain of function. It is even lesser severe than the Wuhan variant. So if we, for example, released this in the wild, in the general public. This variant has less capability compared to the Wuhan. And Wuhan variant has already been beaten up by Delta and then Omicron and many other. And this newly constructed variant, if it gets out, will be beaten up by Wuhan because Wuhan was more efficient than this. Now then there is another question, will this beat Omicron? And once again, Omicron has already beaten Wuhan. So the spike protein change has actually, what did we do? We installed the body of the Wuhan and this variant, Omicron variant is now looking like Wuhan variant. And Omicron has already beaten those variants that has that have beaten Wuhan variant. For example, Omicron has beaten Delta. 
Delta has beaten Wuhan. So will this happen? No. Once again, the question, should they have constructed it? Is that gain of function or not? That all is still a separate discussion. These are the results of after they constructed it. So that means I cannot sit here and say, you should not think it is a good thing or a bad thing. That I cannot propose. That is going to be your opinion. That's going to be your, um, for example, when I started thinking about it, I said, oh man, if this is actually a variant with 80% kill rate in the population right now, this, car, this variant, as soon as it gets out, we are dead. Because I assumed, just from the news, I assumed it would escape vaccines. I assumed it would beat all other variants. And I assumed it would kill us at 80% death rate. However, as I'll go to the death part of this study, you'll find out that Wuhan variant had 100% death rate and this guy had 80%. It was actually lesser than Wuhan variant's fatality rate. But it was more than Omicron's fatality rate. But it has the body of Wuhan, so it actually behaves like Wuhan. So the for me, then the message became that they are saying, we can put Wuhan back out. And would I be concerned? At least for myself, I will not be. But that still does not have any, my opinion does not have any effect on should this kind of research be done or not? Can this research become bad? Can it get out of our hands? That's a totally different discussion. Okay, I want to continue with this one. On the Vero 6 side, when they infected the Vero cells, Wuhan, within 24 hours, had infected 60% of the cells it was given to attack. Omi S, the new variant, was able to infect 41%, and Omicron Pure was able to infect 10%. So for Vero 6, the efficacy, efficiency of this variant, new variant, was even lesser for compared to Wuhan, and still more than Omicron. And I would actually suggest that think about it that in all experiments, it would have more uh, infectivity, more lethality, because the body is Wuhan body. Okay, then what did they do? After they proved that within the cell lines, they could see that Wuhan was the most severe, and then this guy, which had the Wuhan's body and Omicron spike, and then the Omicron. Then what they did was they actually took lung epithelial cells. They actually took the respiratory cells. And within those lung epithelial cells, I have done this discussion in the past. If we have a lung alveolus, a little air pocket or air balloon, air sac, within that sac, there are two types of cells near the end where the gas exchange is occurring, alveolus. There are type 1 pneumocytes and there are type 2 pneumocytes. The pneumocytes are the cells that are making up these sacs or these little um, dilatations where the gas exchange occurs. The type 2 pneumocytes, the one that are red in this one, their job is to make surfactant plus their job is to make more cells. If you destroy some cell over here, it is a type 2 which would act like a stem cell and generate more pneumocytes. So type 2 are responsible to replenish the damaged cells. So if type 2 themselves are damaged, then we have a problem with the lungs because the, the new corrective layer forming cells are gone. And so what they did was, they took, again in the lab, they took type 2 pneumocytes and then they infected them with these three, again separately. And they found the following. They found that the highest infection level was reached by Wuhan variant. The second highest was Omicron, or sorry, Omi S, and the third highest was Omicron. Now, Wuhan variant was the highest. None of the other two, Omi S or Omicron, topped that. But between Omicron and Omi S, 
Omi S was five times higher in infectivity than Omicron because the body of Omi S is Wuhan's body. So it is going to be lethal. But they were trying to prove something with this. They were trying to say, and we'll see to that, the mortality part. They were trying to say, is this the spike protein that changes the behavior? And they found with this that spike proteins, attaching spike protein to Wuhan did not make Wuhan exactly behave like Omicron. Wuhan variant continued to behave like Wuhan. So spike protein and its mutations have very less to do with the phenotypical changes that we are observing in Omicron. They are saying this means that there are more mutations within the body of Omicron that are also making it milder and better for us compared to its parents. Okay, so this is on the page four. So let me just quickly give you a look at the pages as well. This is page two. This is page four. So if you see here, this discussion that I'm doing is from here. Okay, so this was the second set of experiments. They actually infected the real lung cells and they found out that Omi S was less infective, less infective compared to Wuhan, but more compared to Omicron. And it makes sense now that it had the body of the Wuhan. This also, what they were trying to see is that if we attach this spike from Omicron to Wuhan, Wuhan will become as neutral, as less uh, aggressive and come closer towards Omicron because it has the Omicron spike, but that didn't happen. It actually stayed closer to its own parent. It actually became milder than the parent, but still towards the parent than towards the Omicron. So spike did not have, the spike mutations didn't have a lot to do with the phenotype change. That's very interesting. I actually had assumed everything is because of spike mutation. So here, they said the green part. And here the definition, cytopathic effect. That is a, a virus or something killing the cell or making the cell sick. They said, however, no cytopathic effect was seen for Omicron leading to sustained production of infectious virion. What they're saying is something I said in the beginning, that as the the Omicron was not very cytopathic. It was not killing the cells. It was not making them very sick. Because of that, the Omicron just can continue to make its daughters because it was not hurting its host. And that is why it had more daughters. That, that is why it has a higher load in the breathing. That is why it transmits more. However, no CPE was seen for Omicron, leading to sustained production of infectious virions. Overall, these results corroborate the conclusion that mutation in S or spike do not fully account for the attenuated replication capacity of Omicron in cultured human cells. And that also means that there is something more than the spike protein. The other mutations are responsible for this behavior. This is a very important thing. The whole virus is mutating to become more friendly towards humans. Then, so now they did the cell line testing, then they took the lung cells and tested them. Then the third set of testing they did was on the mice. These were spe special mice. These are genetically modified mice, which have their cells producing human ACE2 on them so that the ACE2 viruses can bind with those cells. Normally, the mice ACE2 do not bind with the SARS-CoV-2, so they have modified these mice. So this was a K18H ACE2 mice. And what they did was they infected these mice through the intranasal route, and they infected them with these three separately. So once again, this is where that 80% uh, mortality or kill rate at 80%. So they now compared pure Omicron's infection and pathology and mortality of the mice, Omi S, which is Wuhan body and Omicron spike, or Wuhan alone. So pure Wuhan, pure Omicron, and a combination of these two. 
and here is what they found. This is page number six, line number 114. I'm more specific here so that you can read it. So this is page four, five, this is page six and line number 114. Spike has an appreciable but minimal role in Omicron pathogenicity in K18 H is to mice. That's what I'm discussing. So here is what they did. Once they infected them, they found out that the mice that were infected with Wuhan variant, Wuhan, 100% of the mice rapidly started losing weight. Within eight days, they had lost 20% of their weight. 100% with Wuhan. With OMIS, which was Wuhan body, an Omicron spike actually became milder than Wuhan and it had 80% of the mice within nine days become 20, lose 20% weight. So it had similar infectivity or pathogenicity or disease progress like Wuhan, like its parent, but because of that milder spike protein that was attached to it, it actually behaved less efficiently and it was it infected 80 percent of the mice while the wuhan variant the parent if you will infected 100 percent now the other parent who had donated the arm the spike protein the omicron made no one sick or no one clinically sick so omicron did not make mice sick But Omicron spike when attached to Wuhan did not stop Wuhan from making mice sick. That means Omicron has mutations more than on the spike in the body that are helping Omicron be less lethal, cause less disease. This is a very important outcome. So even if you donate Omicron spike to a previous variant, that variant doesn't become milder, it stays kind of towards its own self. So that means the body matters. Okay, so this is the other experiment. And finally, this is the experiment that caused so much of uh, the anger or outrage, fatality. So in for the mice who died, here is what they found. They found that Wuhan variant, pure Wuhan variant, or ancestral variant, or W2T variant, whatever you want to call them. Some people have been saying, why do you call them Wuhan? They, they came from Wuhan, so at least we should be able to call them Wuhan, or call them ancestor, or call them whatever you like, wild type. So the wild type caused all mice to die, 100% died. Now, wild type or Wuhan variant with Omicron spike on it, 80% mice died. And Omicron killed no one. This is the change. Or this, this is the data that was looked at in multiple ways. It was looked at as the kill rate of this modified or newly built variant was 80% more than, or not 80% more, was 80% compared to 0% of Omicron. So this is what, here the kill rate is 80%. It would kill 80% of the people it, it will infect. But that is not the entirely correct answer because the Wuhan variant could kill 100%, but Wuhan variant has already become defeated. So if this got out, it would actually not do much because this variant is already defeated. This is equal to going and sending out a variant milder than Wuhan variant out in the population. We have Omicron that has already beaten Delta, which had beaten Wuhan. So Daniel says, how did it beat Wuhan? So Wuhan was beaten by Delta, and then Delta was beaten by Omicron. And the reason is more transmissibility, more load, more survivability. The fittest, right, survival of the fittest, it was more fit to survive. I had been saying it for two and a half years. 
and people i still remember i used to get curses from people to say well after wuhan there was delta why do you not think that after omicron there would be something like delta but here even at cellular level this variant the artificially built variant is still getting beaten up by wuhan and whoever is fit is surviving omicron so fatality they had three set of mice infected by three set of variants omicron pure wuhan pure and omicron spike and wuhan body wuhan pure killed all mice omicron pure killed no one and wuhan body and omicron spike killed 80% of the mice it infected so we can so now i'm putting my message out we can continue to call it gain of function we can say they they created a variant that is more lethal and would kill 80% of the people who would be infected that is actually an incorrect message gain of function there is no gain here but could we call it gain of function on omicron yes in the lab if you put it out in the production it would be beaten up but then you could have this philosophical discussion that fine we lucked out in this case could it have become really a monstrous thing yes and if that got out could it cause damage yes we are going through a pandemic to see what can happen even if we say it is coming from a lab or coming from a bat wherever but we're seeing this thing causing destruction but at least we have to keep it in the context so that at least within the within my um community we try that we stay as informed and balanced with our thinking as possible there are things that concern us as well and others say well you should not be concerned about this here i feel that we should not be that much concerned again i'm not discussing should they this is bsl3 we have bsl4 and 5 labs as well if this is happening in bsl3 imagine what could be happening in bsl4 and 5 so that's a different discussion all right is this is this clear this for fatality the kill rate of 80% it is in the petri dish in the lab better than omicron but it cannot even beat wuhan and wuhan is already beaten four times by others so i'm going to continue to move from here then they wanted to see propagation of this variant so this is page 7 line number 135 page 7 this is page 7 line 1 this is page 7 line 135 this line this line consistent with in vitro finding that's what i'm now working with they said the propagation of this variant wuhan variant the the grand daddy that was the highest in propagation and came the omicrons the omicron pure was used as a reference both of them omi s and omicron were defeated by wuhan parent but the omi s was 30 times more infectious than omicron this is a very important thing that means the body of the virus also participate in infectiousness and not just the spike protein you attach the omicron spike protein which we think it is a spike protein that made it more infectious you attach that to wuhan and then expect the wuhan to be more infectious then the wuhan's body uh, sorry then you expect the wuhan to become less infectious because the spike of omicron is less infectious compared to the previous ones and you find out that that's not the, it didn't do anything to the other variants they stayed true to their own nature because of the body so that means body has some uh, some contribution lot of contribution body's contribution was so much that this mutated spike could only change it by small numbers has dead jim says but micron and wuhan haven't had to compete head to head if omi s or wuhan started spreading again would the infection from omi protect us sufficiently from so 
the Wuhan, remember every variant had a gain or benefit over the previous one. So Wuhan was beaten by Delta and Delta was beaten by Omicron. So that means Omicron's transmissibility is bigger than Wuhan or Delta. That means if you bring Wuhan in the mix to say, let's have a fight, Omicron will win. And that winning is not because it can be more pathogenic or not. Actually, it is less pathogenic. That is why it will win because the, and they say it in their uh, manuscript, if you, um, if you search for the word cytopathic uh, or CPE, you will actually come across these paragraphs. They said that Wuhan variant and OMI S rapidly killed the cells in which they went. And because of that, their further daughter formations stopped or reduced. While the Omicron was sitting in the cell and not damaging it too much and just continuing to make its daughter, so it had a larger pool. And if you put them all together, the larger pool will win over the other guys. So good question, but I don't think that this would happen. And that is what I've been saying for some time to people's anger and attacks on me. But you are seeing that even at a cellular level, they are able to prove it. Okay, so continuing. Then pathogenicity, the, the severity, page 7, line 142. This line here. We performed histopathological analysis of the lung tissue of infected mice. So let's look at this. They found the pathogenicity. Wuhan variant, extensive near diffused immunoreactivity. Now remember this, these mice were generally constructed in a way that they become, they fall ill to SARS-CoV-2 more easily because they have ACE2 on them. So the Wuhan variant, actually poor mice, it near diffused immunoreactivity. It caused throughout the lung of the mice, everywhere there was inflammation, near diffused, almost everywhere. And Omicron, pure, has lesser than 1% of focal infections in the alveoli, in those tiny little sacs of the gas exchange. 1% of them, or lesser than 1% of them became infected. And now OMI S, that is Wuhan's body and Omicron spike, 15 to 20%. So actually the infect, the pathogenicity because of this spike protein is reduced even to Wuhan. So that was very interesting. And this reduced pathogenicity is its weapon because it can sit in there and just multiply without killing the host or host cells and then has a chance to continue to survive. More survive than the other variants that would quickly kill the cells and have their factories destroyed by their own selves and even destroy the human being or the person or make that person bedridden and so on. We've discussed this in the past. So they say, see bronchioles were spike positive in Omicron infected cell. Further bronchiolar infection Bronchiolar infection was associated with epithelial necrosis in OMI as infected mass cells. Uh, my sorry, uh, necrosis is death of the cells, as determined through serial hematoxylin and eosine section analysis. Whereas no histological evidence of airway injury was observed in Omicron. So compared to Omicron, the variant with the body of Wuhan was more cytotoxic compared to Omicron, but it was less cytotoxic compared to pure body and spike of the Wuhan. This suggests that the replication of Omicron in mice lungs, particularly in bronchioles, is substantially attenuated compared with OMI-S, supporting our conclusion that mutation in the S protein are only partially responsible for the attenuated pathogenesis of Omicron. That 
is very, very interesting. Then they continue on. I mean, I'm at 145 or 50. And if you see, they continue and discuss and discuss and discuss. So there is one more set of experiments they did, which I would just summarize quickly here. The next set of experiments was within the spike protein now. Uh, so they have now proven that the spike protein is not sufficient to provide the phenotypical behavior of Omicron to other parents. It is the body of the parent that also matters. So that's one done. Now within this, now they're honing in on the spike to say, well, the spike is a big thing. It has an S2 unit and it has an S1 unit. And within the S1, there is an RBD, receptor binding domain. And then within the RBD, there is the actual binding part, receptor binding motif that binds with the S2. So they wanted to then see, okay, within the spike, is it the receptor binding motif that is providing these properties of Omicron? or receptor binding domain, or S1, or S2, or all of it. Their suspicion was that we all had, that it's the receptor binding domain and receptor binding motif. These mutations are driving the escapes and evasions and the behavior of the variant. And they found out it was not the case. The remaining spike protein mutations had to be there to produce this behavior. What they did was they just took the receptor binding motif, just that part, and plugged that onto the spike protein of the Wuhan. And it did not make any huge difference. That was very interesting as well. So it was not just the spike. And it is not just the receptor binding motif. It has to be the whole spike with mutations, and it has to be the whole virus with its mutations. The whole package has to be there to behave like Omicron. That means those studies that say one more mutation away and we are dead. We have to have the whole thing. So, continuing. They said, the fact that none of the receptor binding motif swap viruses they, they actually just change the genetic material of this part so instead of giving the whole uh, in, instead of donating the whole arm of omicron to wuhan variant they just gave the fingers of the omicron to wuhan variant and that didn't really do much so the fact that none of the rbm swap viruses achieved difference of 11 fold seen with wuhan and omi s so between the Wuhan and OMES, there is an 11-fold difference of their pathogenicity. And if they just gave the motif to Wuhan, that did not patch that. So that means that huge difference was not coming from receptor binding motif. That's very interesting. Because these were my assumptions that it is the spike protein, within the spike it is a receptor binding domain, within the domain it is a motif. These are the mutations that are driving the behavior. And it turns out that's not the case. So 11-fold seen between Wuhan and OMES suggests that mutations in other parts of spike also contribute to vaccine resistance. Look, they use the word vaccine resistance. Before, those folks who are vaccine-loving folks, they start attacking me that why am I picking on the vaccines? That is what they talked about, vaccine resistance. Okay. Then they said to investigate if specific mutations in Omicron receptor binding motif drive vaccine escape. We generated two additional panels of recombinant viruses, one with Wuhan spike carrying Omicron RBM, either singly or combination, and the other was this. And then they looked at it and again, not much. So here is the end of the discussion. This is the researchers, Mohsin Saeed, and he has this little figurative wrench, and he and his team, they took the arm from Omicron and transplanted it on Wuhan. That was the discussion. Um, <laughs> Mushroom says, 
I came for Dr. Bean discussion. I stayed for the illustrations. Thank you very much. OK, so uh, it's 55 minutes. I'm sure nobody's going to watch this. Plus, this is not sensational. So people are not going to watch this in general. But let me answer some questions and tag on some more minutes to this one. Um, So Cyber Nurse says, isn't there risk for rogue labs to start experimenting with risk of creating something more? Absolutely. So that is a totally different um, discussion that I am sure that there are going to be. So now, please, this is a tin foil hat time. I'm sure that there may be labs in various countries that are already using these things as an asset for future if they wanted to do something bad. I just one more. So, <coughs> excuse me. Nipa says, probably that is the reason the vaccine without spike only is not sufficient but the one with the attenuated whole virus like bharat biotech or sinov correct so it is at least in theory i believe that attenuated viruses or or killed viruses are better however i haven't yet seen the data just like we have data here with pfizers and others but in theory nipa you're correct Okay, so with this, please like, subscribe, and share. Um, I hope that you like the work that I do. And if you would like to support this work, there are links in the description. Uh, Margaret, thank you very much for your generous uh, support today. I was uh, I looked at the email, and thank you. Um, so if you would like to support this work, you can buy in the description. There is a link to drbean.com where there are another 900 medical premium medical lectures. I think you'll enjoy them. That is very low price and one time price and not recurring. Everyone wants recurring prices nowadays. So I do not have rec recurring. So you can use that or there are links in the description. You can buy me a coffee or you can use PayPal or you can use other links to support this work. Thank you very much. If you become part of patrons, that is awesome as well. $5 per month and you become that. You can actually become a member of YouTube as well for what, $1.99 or $2.99 per month. So with this, thank you very much. And uh, yesterday I had a discussion on Zoom with those who were supporters. And I discussed the discussion that the discussions that we had at FLCCC. Um, some of the supporters said that they had less time, less notice to go on to Zoom. They did not know. So I'm going to do one more Zoom for the supporters um, within a week. So I will announce that early on so that you can find time and join me. So with this, thank you very much. Have a good day. Stay safe, happy, and healthy. This study is not scary for the outcome, should they have done it or not that is different that is i would like to hear from you what is your thinking so with this bye bye for now